Today is Tea Tuesday. It's hosted by Life with Patty and Kathy at Kathy's Favorite Things. Check them out also. And here we go. Welcome to Mrs. Peach Thrifty Living. I'm so happy you're here today. Today is another a glimpse of my life. This is number 28. Last time I talked to you about Richard being on dialysis. He was on for five years. He would go three times a week and it was two or three hours in the afternoon is what he chose to go and it worked out pretty well and he really had a good attitude about it. We still continued to go camping and all those kind of things. As I have mentioned before, uh, you could schedule ahead of time and go on trips, schedule to go to the dialysis center wherever you was going. Even they, I understand they even have cruises where you can do the same. We got to know the nurses very well with uh, uh, nutritional because they follow your nutrition very closely. Richard was a little more fortunate than some because he could still urinate where um, if you could not um, relieve yourself, then you really had to be much more stricter than if you could uh, go on your own. So that was one of the things that was a blessing in the middle of all this other. And they always checked your blood work all the time. And um, we knew all those creatine numbers very well. I can't really quite tell you what they are these days. Not long after he went on dialysis, he signed up for, they told him about a program that you could sign up to to see if there was a kidney available to you. It was for people that, they were older people that signed up that they would donate their kidney. A lot of times people have good kidneys and they're older, and so they could uh, sign up to be a donor also. And so he signed up for that to a hospital in San Francisco. He would meet with the doctors there occasionally, but they didn't. We didn't have to go to San Francisco. We have another town a little closer than half an hour away that um, every few months we would go and um, meet with them. The doctors would come there. We could track, see how far maybe that it would be before he could get a kidney. Our son, Josh, had offered to, to um, donate his kidney if it was, it would have been a match. But Richard said no, because in his family, there was a whole family did not have good kidneys. And in fact, his mother and his brother was both on dialysis. And that wasn't a very good record. And he didn't want to take a chance of giving your only kidney and then you losing your other because it was bad. As time went by and it went into three, four, and five years, remember we still continued to live just as normal and um, did all of our things, camping and vacations, and Richard would have to rest a lot. You know, you get tired. I mean, it, takes, it saps your whole system out, so he was tired a lot, but uh, he still kept the yard up, and did all those kind of things that... Uh, he always did, just a little slower. Time he would stop and rest a lot. As time got closer for, as I mentioned before, for the time that uh, they would, you know, say you're higher on the list that you had a better chance. They, and pretty soon we decided we needed to drive to San Francisco to make sure we knew where this place was because. You know, we don't drive in San Francisco, and um, it was a rare day that we ever did. And, I mean, Richard used to drive all over the country, but the last several years he had not done that. As far as cities go, cities are, to me, worse than driving in uh, the hills. I can drive in the hills much better than the cities. So... We decided to go to San Francisco to see, make sure we knew exactly where this place was. We, um, I guess we had the Google or we Googled it and wrote it down. I think that's what we did. We may not have had uh, all the set up to navigate 
in our car at that time. So we this, we went to San Francisco and our directions were great. We drove straight there, looked the hospital over, and we felt confident that come the time that we got the call, we would be ready. When you get the call, you know you only have a certain amount of time to get there because you know, it's a kidney, somebody has just passed away and, and you're uh, going to be able to get their kidney and they can only keep it going for so long. From what I understand, I don't understand it all. But so we got ourselves ready. We packed as best as we could, had lists to make sure we was ready to head out the door anytime we got that call. It could be day or night. And as time went by, it was getting closer and closer. We knew it was closer to the top of the list. Well, I'm going to veer away from this story a little bit at this point. Um, in the meantime, you know, I've, I've mentioned our families were doing their own thing growing up. And Josh had grown up and decided to move to Southern California with his friend. Um, and his parents lived down there and he could get a good job there. And so he and his friend moved down there. So he wasn't around all the time at that point. Essentially, he did um, meet a beautiful little girl there and they married and had their little girl. So you've met little Leah. We got the call not too long after our trial run down there, say they possibly had a match for Richard. Be on alert because uh, they wasn't po positive at the time. So and it was early morning, really early, like I don't know, two or three in the morning. We decided to, uh, we just waited until we got that phone call. And then we got the phone call and they said, come, we got a match for you. Well, we're all excited. We get in the car, we grab our things that we've packed already or had the list that we grabbed real fast. I knew once I got there, I would be there till he had his kidney transplant and be, and come home. So he drove himself to San Francisco to get his kidney transplant. Well, as we get near the city, thankfully it was before the, the rush of the most of the traffic. So that was a good thing. But we took a wrong turn. We exited too soon. And we realized it as soon as we got off and we thought, what do we do now? And here we were, we drive, drove, and of course, we're on a time crunch. We drove to a little convenience store and stopped. And of course, nobody in there could hardly speak English and was asking, how do you get back to in the hospital? We named it. And of course, we thought probably there was a little, we could, we could either um, not get back on the freeway, but go cut down some side streets or something to get back to where we wanted. They couldn't talk. They couldn't speak English good enough for us to understand. I think we tried another convenience store and still didn't have any success. And we think we're getting really frustrated and say, Oh Lord, what do we do now? And we seen this, I guess they're a little, um, they have a little cart. They have like, um, uh, traffic control, you know, on the side streets, you know, keep traffic moving or whatever. Uh, one of the uh, golf cart. And we s pulled over and asked the man there, can you please help us? We need to get to the hospital and told him he was waiting for a kidney transplant and they had one for him and told him the works. And he said, he hesitated, started pointing out, go this way, go that way. And he said, wait, just follow me. Oh my goodness, you guys. That was a miracle. We were so frustrated and so nervous about getting there. And he, so we just followed him and got right there. We did not have to get back on the freeway. And we went just close behind him. And when he got to the hospital, he motioned for us. So there it was. And we got ourselves, we parked in the parking garage and got out and headed in there. And that's when the action began. They took him back and 
after they got him ready, I got to wait with him for quite a while. And that's going to be the end of my story this time. That was such a miracle and a blessing for, for him to guide us there. I just felt like he was like an angel at that time. God just sent the right person, just put us in contact with the right person. I went through some of my calendars. I kept a two-year calendar for years, and sometimes I write more in it than other times. But during that time, I came across my little calendar that I had written. It's a little, you know, that you put in your purse. And I put a little note on it each day of some of what I did. So next time I'll be telling you a little bit more about the kidney transplant and um, what I did because I stayed there the whole week in the hospital. Well, besides one night. And I'll tell you about that next time. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you remember that no matter, you can call on Jesus just look like we did. God knew we needed a special help that day, and he brought it to us, and I'm so thankful that uh, I'm here to tell you about it now. I hope you'll come back next time, and I'll try not to wait so long in between these stories. I'm getting very close to the end of what to remember to tell you, so I'll see you next time. In the meantime, I have more than just this going on. I have all kinds of uh, video every day of something. And some of them I, I think you would enjoy. Maybe not every one of them, but I pray that some of them will just, you'll enjoy. God bless you today. You can go back in my playlist and watch A Glimpse in My Life and catch up on all of this if you would like. And also, I just wanted to remind you that it is Tea Tuesday. Check and see what everyone else posts on this wonderful day. It is hosted by Life with Patty and Cassie's Favorite Things. They're both awesome channels, and you can enjoy their channels also. So thank you for coming along, and I'll see you tomorrow.